Well, for this week, for the midweek message, we are in the, the book of Joel, and it is entitled God's Gracious Offer. And the, the text is in Joel chapter 2. Joel is one of the minor prophets, written somewhere around 600 BC, and it was written to, to God's people. And so Joel chapter 2, verses 11 to 14, reads like this. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number, and mighty is the army that obeys his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love and he relents from sending calamity. After graphically describing the day of the Lord in chapters 2 verses 1 to 11, Joel ends this passage with this question of who can endure the day of the Lord. Now Joel knows the answer, and we know the answer, and God knows the answer, and that is no one. And the only thing that is going to, uh, only thing that is going to help us endure is to respond wholeheartedly to God's gracious offer of salvation. And God wants every nation corporately to return to him in verse 16. And, and also this begins with an internal turning back to God of every individual. And that is in verse 13. And so the motivation to respond is in the second bit of verse 13. And, and it's a positive motivation. God is a gracious and compassionate God. He's, he's slow to anger. He's abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. He is the personal God of the Bible. And time and time again, God didn't destroy the children of Israel, although they deserved it. And we know this in, in our own lives. Although we deserve it, God doesn't destroy us over and over Again, Isaiah 55 verse 8 says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now, this verse, and this I've done this many times, has, has often been used to mean God's omnipotence or God's power, or God's uh, sovereignty over this world. But in the context of this verse, in Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7, it's, it's written in the context of forgiveness. And I hadn't, I hadn't realized that. I hadn't seen that. But it's in the written in the context of forgiveness. So it's man's way not to forgive. When we are wrong, we hold grudges. But God is gracious, and he forgives. And the mission of God is that every tribe, tongue, and nation will come and respond to this gracious offer of God. And so therefore, every person, no matter your creed or your self-opinion of yourself or the evil that you have committed or that you are committing right now, will be able to stop you from today responding to this gracious offer of God, of returning to him whole heartedly and so we need to respond to god in a wholehearted manner he does not want us just to give him lip service he doesn't want us to tear our garments or rend our garments but he wants us to rend our hearts to break our hearts for the things of god to live for god wholeheartedly this week for the midweek message i'm, I'm going to be trying something new i've written down a few application questions for us to think about there are four of them and so I encourage you to take the time and as we've, as we've gone through this devotion, go back and read Joel, go back and read some of the texts and then go into the, the, the questions of thinking about it and spend some time with it. Go get your Bible, go get a pen, go get a notepad and just spend time in God's word as an individual or in a corporate family setting. But use this time to spend time in God's word and consider the gracious offer of God and then close with, a time of prayer. I look forward to seeing everyone again hopefully soon and lots of love from the swans.